Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very sad day in the PlayStation landscape. We have some breaking news here. I was really hoping this was not going to happen. Although, as we've discussed on LTPS, it seems like this is kind of where we were going to go at some point. SIE as a big powerhouse is still very much part of a publicly traded company. And so this was probably going to happen. And sure enough, we saw from the Insomniac breach where some emails were sent around suggesting that we would see a studio closure and some reductions in the workforce. So that has finally been confirmed today. So let's go over the news of what's going on with the entire organization and what this means long term. So over on the SIE blog, the president and CEO, Jim Ryan, uh, did confirm that there's going to be a workforce reduction globally of about 8% or about 900 people. And as part of an email sent out to employees, Jim Ryan says, and I quote here, after careful consideration and many leadership discussions over several months, it has become clear changes need to be made to continue to grow the business and develop the company. We had to step back, look at our business holistically, and move forward focusing on the long-term sustainability of the company and delivering the best experiences possible for our community. The goal is to streamline our resources to ensure our continued success and ability to deliver experiences gamers and creators have come to expect from us. Now, this reduction will impact all SIE regions and several PlayStation studios. Uh, notably, London Studios will be shut down. There will be reductions at Fire Sprite and reductions across various functions of SIE in the UK. As part of the planned exits, in Japan, they'll implement a next career support program, and then in other countries, they'll begin conversations with those affected, which would include severance. In a separate SIE blog post, this one from Herman Hulst, the head of PlayStation Studios, he outlines the affected studios that are going to be seeing reduction. So in the US, that would be Insomniac Games, Naughty Dog, as well as technology, creative, and support teams. So probably somewhere like PlayStation Visual Arts or the San Diego team and things like that. Um, in the UK, that's the London Studio Closure and also reductions uh, at Fire Sprite, but also Guerrilla Games. We're hearing that's about 40 people at Guerrilla Games. Uh, Herman also confirms that an undisclosed amount of projects have been cancelled, where it reads, and I quote here, we looked at our studios and our portfolio, evaluating projects in various stages of development, and we have decided that some of these projects will not move forward. I want to be clear that the decision to stop work on these projects is not a reflection of the talent or passion of team members. Our philosophy has always been to allow creative experimentation. Sometimes great ideas don't become great games. Sometimes a project is started with the best intentions before shifts within the market or industry result in a change of plans. Now, we should also mention that Jason Schreier of Bloomberg put out a report going over the news, and the one item we learned from that is that the Twisted Metal project at Fire Sprite is also apparently canceled as well. So allegedly that project wasn't very far along and wasn't even fully greenlit. So that's what we uh, know for at least one particular project. Obviously, they're not being exactly clear as to what games were canceled, and they're not really going to outline that anyway, because many of these games were <laughs> probably not even uh, given a form reveal. In the case of London Studio, we only knew that it was going to be a live service game uh, based in a, a fantasy London, um, and it was a, a co-op experience or something like that. So um, clearly that's one live service game that was canceled, but Twisted Metal would also be a live service game that did not have a formal reveal just yet, but that one would be canceled as well. This is coming off the back of The Last of Us multiplayer also being canceled. So you know, uh, clearly the live service rollout has been uh, very difficult, and this is kind of what we often say about the live service thing, uh, is that making those kind of games are very, very hard. So it was bound to happen that maybe a few of these were not going to make it, but now we're seeing a handful of them not make it. But it is an absolute shame to see this happen, like we, you know, said at the top of this thing. Um, and this was like before the emails from Insomniac Games, right? It was always a matter of like, at the time, and this was going back to like mid-2023, I'd always heard that uh, a good portion of the company was on a hiring freeze, they weren't bringing on more people, uh, or that they were really trying to watch the budget carefully in terms of like avoiding unnecessary travel or things like that. But um, that is kind of like the indicator of them either really trying to avoid layoffs or it's bound to happen at some point. Then we had the Insomniac Breach, seeing those emails uh, with the suggestion that a studio closure was going to happen. With London Studio being the one that uh, it happened to, I mean, I can see why that may be the case, considering they were likely not hitting the milestone builds that they needed to reach. Uh, but it's still 
it's so disappointing, especially London Studio. You know, that is the studio that, I mean, in theory, if we're, we're considering the, the roots of that studio, which is from Psygnosis, I mean, that's the oldest PlayStation studio that we have, um, which in an ironic way, they oftentimes were put on many projects that historically, uh, the last 15, 20 years, this would have been after Team Soho. They were doing, you know, very experimental camera games, PlayStation Move, PlayStation Eye games, um, responsible for SingStar. Eventually, they did move on to VR stuff, doing, say, Blood, of Tr uh, Blood and Truth on PlayStation VR, and then we were finally going to see them, you know, go back to what would be a, a more traditional 2D game, uh, just that it would be a live service title. So I was really looking forward to what that game was going to look like, and it's, it sucks that we're not going to be able to see that, but um, broadly speaking, across the entire organization, yeah, this sucks. There's no, there's no other way to put it. Um, but, you know, coming off of that uh, recent financial report we had where we see their margins are pretty thin on some of these big uh, these big multi-million dollar projects to risk so much money and then make very little for, for certain titles that they're releasing. And as we mentioned before, live service is a very risky venture and they were developing upwards of, you know, 11, 12 of them, depending on how you break down exactly what games they consider live service or not, um, and wanting to ship those by fiscal year 25, fiscal year 26, having to delay half of them. Now we're seeing some of them canceled. I think a lot of this was inevitable, uh, although it's it, it's something where that doesn't make it any better. So again, going back to like, this is a publicly traded company. They're going to worry about these things and care about it. They can put out this lip service about how they, these are creative people and we don't want to do this, but you know, of course they are absolutely going to do this when the time calls for it because 2023 was an absolutely brutal year for the games business, uh, not just for SIE, but for many of these, uh, many, many publishers, Embracer acquiring all those studios uh, with rapid expansion, and now they're just dropping studios and doing layoffs left and right. Microsoft with their acquisition of ABK and bringing on all that liability and realizing, okay, now we're going to do some, uh, we're going to get rid of some people. And so it's just like, it's been very cutthroat. I don't know how anybody can ever feel safe in this business, um, especially especially considering like it is SIE where they're a very successful platform holder, right? You know, to work at Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Gorilla, and even then you just, you don't feel safe. And that's the sentiment I've heard is that it doesn't matter where you work. You know, th this is bound to happen and it is brutal and it sucks. I really don't like it, uh, but it's always like, and that, that, this is the other thing. It's always better financially for these big companies to just cancel this stuff before releasing it commercially. They can write it off. And so um, it's going, it's always going to be more advantageous. If there was any kind of like positive spin we could try and put on this, it's that, you know, perhaps so, and this maybe is a bad thing, but they would be less risk averse to what was a field they historically, again, had no presence in, which would be live service. I know there's a, a very bad sentiment surrounding live service in general, but of course, Sony would want to try and expand and grow. So it was always, um, you know, on paper, a smart play to say, bring in Bungie and try and uh, get some expertise to evaluate that portfolio lineup. Uh, what should we be doing for these games? And then even then, it's like they bring in Bungie and Bungie's got their own uh, round of turmoil going on, right? Where Sony might now be uh, taking over that board and being responsible for a studio that they initially acquired for expertise in a space that they had no foot in. So everything about this is very messy and, and slippery. Um, and it's just, and it really sucks that we lost London Studio because uh, they were just such a, uh, I mean, that's an OG PlayStation studio. Again, I feel like most people probably were not really playing or caring for, you know, a lot of those experimental uh, experimental games they were doing for a 15, 20 year history, but even going back to like the getaway and again, all those Psygnosis titles, um, it's just like a lot of uh, talent and institutional knowledge that's now gone. That's a bummer, um, but maybe Sony will be more conservative now in this, this space. I mean, I, it, I think it was a certain that all 12 live service games were not going to ship. I mean, I, I surely some of these were probably not even going to make it to begin with. Uh, but to spend, say, two years in pre-production, making a vertical slice, figuring out a gameplay loop, and then doing full production for another year and a half or, or so. Um, then we're talking about a four or five year timeline, assuming that is the timeline that, that is safely, that would be like a, a best case scenario is four or five years, but really it's going to take longer. You ship it, it's live service, it, it's now concurrent, it needs more people to maintain it. And I think Sony's just uh, kind of in that spot now where they're understanding that some of these projects are just not going to be viable, especially, I guess, the kind of genre that they were exploring, like Twisted Metal. I can see how that would also maybe not make it if that was planned as this sort of long-term live service kind of Twisted Metal. Um, 
So uh, it, all around, this is lame. It sucks. Don't like it. There's really no other positive way to put it. Uh, and I feel for everybody at PlayStation Studios that were affected by these layoffs. I would hope that um, you're going to be back on your feet very soon. But, um, you know, again, it's just like such a tough business. I don't know how anybody feels uh, safe at some of these these places, right? So bad day in PlayStation history, but uh, that's just kind of what we have to deal with for the time being. I'm sure we'll probably get more anecdotes, details, stories. Maybe we'll learn about some of the other uh, other canceled projects if there is more than just what we're hearing about so far. Um, and as far as like the rest of studios go, I mean, the the one thing we were discussing for a bit is like, okay, maybe Media Molecule. I think a lot of people are looking at Media Molecule as the studio that would be shut down or possibly bend. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that it wasn't those two, but I, I didn't really want to see anything close, obviously. Um, especially London, where we were going to get a proper 2D game from them after them being sort of gone from that for a very long time. So I don't know. It's a lot of complicated thoughts. It's just, it's not good news, of course. So I think we'll kind of end it there. And if there are any other extra details that we missed, we will cover them on LTPS this Friday. So until then, that is it. Thank you for watching and uh, my best wishes to everyone at PlayStation Studios.